Hello there, and welcome to this series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at integrating so we can find displacement and velocity uh, from our velocity or acceleration curve. So we're just doing the reverse of what we've done in previous videos. So, uh, you've seen this diagram before here. If we've got displacement x as a function of time, then we can differentiate to find velocity and differentiate again to find acceleration. Well, the reverse process works as well. So if we integrate acceleration with respect to time, we get velocity. And if we integrate velocity with respect to time, we get integration. We get a different displacement. Um, the only thing that's uh, a little bit of a snag in this process is that there's always going to be a plus c when we go from one step to the other. So maybe use different letters here. So plus c for the first part of your integration. And then if it gets in the way later on, then use a plus k just to distinguish between uh, your integration constants. So let's have a look at a question here then. Um, a particle is moving along the x-axis. At time t, the particle is at a point where x equals 5. So effectively here, this is the piece of information that's going to help us uh, to find out what the constant of integration is. Uh, the velocity of the particle at time t is equal to 6t minus t squared. And the question is, find an expression for displacement from O as a function of time and the distance of the particle from its starting point at 6 seconds. So, uh, what we can do here to find displacement is we integrate back from velocity. So, integrate velocity. So when we integrate this, we're going to get 3t squared minus t cubed over 3 plus c. And now what we're going to do is bring in the fact that when t equals 0, x equals 5. So 5 is the value for x, t is equal to 0, so substitute those values in. And we eventually see that c is equal to 5. So our function for displacement, therefore, is 3t squared minus t cubed over 3 plus 5. So that's how we know uh, the position of our particle uh, along the x-axis. So that's part A complete. Part B is to just substitute in the value of 6. So substitute that in. So it's 41. So the distance of the particle uh, from its starting point is 41 and the units here is in meters per second, so this is going to be in meters. So after six seconds, it's 41 meters from O. Okay, so note that um, given that it starts at five meters, it's 36 meters from its starting point. Okay, so read the question carefully there, that almost caught me out there. All right then, uh, second question then. A particle travels in a straight line after t seconds. Its velocity is v, uh, where v is equal to 5 minus 3t squared. Given that t is greater than 0, find uh, the distance travelled by the particle in the third second of its motion. Okay, so let's sketch a graph here then. So what we're going to have is quadratic, negative quadratic, y-intercept at 5, and we'll find the roots on the axis here, so 1.29. Uh, t is greater than 0, so we don't need it going backwards. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so remember here, the area under the velocity time curve is equal to the distance travelled. So the first second is going to be from 0 to 1, Second second is going to be from 1 to 2, and third second is going to be from 2 to 3. So what we want to find is the integration in between the second and the third second that is this area here. So we want to work out what this area is. Okay, so we need to integrate the function between the two limits. So remember where we um, saw integration in the integration part, in the pure part, where we integrate between 3 and 2. Well, effectively, that's what's going on here. If we want to find the distance travelled in the third second, then that's effectively integrating in between 2 and 3. So, sub so do the integration, substitute in the values, do the subtraction, and you get minus 14. And you'd expect a negative because that part of the graph is on the bottom part of the, um, 
the coordinate axes here, but uh, given that we're working with distance here, the distance therefore travelled is 14 metres. Okay, so be very careful on this type of question. If part of the area is above or below the axis, then you will need to integrate separately over the two parts, over the point of intersection on the axis. So that's why we drew our graph out to start with, because we wanted to just make sure that the second, the third second uh, wouldn't get in the way of this 1.29 intersection with the x-axis. If it was indeed the second second, so we'd uh, in, be integrating between 1 and 2, then we'd have to split that into two parts, the integration from 1 to 1.29 first, and then add that on to 1.29 up to 2 and then add the moduluses of those um, distances. If we were to just do it um, blindly, just doing it in between 1 and 2, then this is going to be a negative value, this, this will be a positive value, the bottom part here is going to be a negative value and part of them will cancel each other out. We've seen that in the pure chapter. Alright then, so your turn to have a go at these two questions here then. Pause the video and have a go. Right then, well done for having a go at these two questions then. So, a particle P is moving on the x-axis at time t seconds. The velocity of P is 8 plus 2t minus 3t squared meters per second in the direction of the x uh, increasing. At time t equals 0, P is at the point where x equals 4. Find the distance from P from O uh, when t equals 1. Okay, so we've got velocity here that equals 8 plus 2t minus 3t squared. So if we want to work out displacement, then we're going to have to integrate 8 plus 2t minus 3t squared dt. So this is therefore going to equal 8t plus t squared minus t cubed plus c. Now we know here that uh, at time t equals 0, x equals 4. So substitute those values in and we get 4 equals c. So the function of our displacement is 8t plus t squared minus t cubed plus 4. And the question here is find the distance of p from o when t equals 1. This is going to be 8 plus 1 minus 1 plus 4, which is equal to 12 metres. Okay, so there we are then. So that is, um, yeah, 12 metres from O. Great, so that's the answer. Okay, question 5 here. A particle is moving in a straight line at time t seconds. Its velocity v is given by 6t squared minus 51t plus 90. Uh, when t equals 0, displacement is 0. Find the distance between the two points where p is instantaneously at rest. Okay, so whenever p is at rest, then the velocity is equal to 0. So uh, 6t squared minus 51t plus 90 will equal 0. Now I can see here that all of them are factors of 3, so I'll factor out the 3 first. I think this is 17t plus 30 equals 0. And then let's uh, let's factorise this. It's going to be 2t and t. Um, so it could be 15 and 2. Um, no, it's not 15 and 2. Let's try 10 and 3. No, 6 and 5. Yes, so let's put a minus 6 here and a minus 5 here. So that will give us minus 12t minus another 5t. That's minus 17t. Great, so we've got t equals 2.5 and t equals 6. So these are the two times that we want to integrate between and we'll find the distance, how far it travels between these two points. So it's going to be the integral between 6 to 2.5 of 6t squared minus 51t 
plus 90 dt. And this is then going to equal, so it's the integral between um, 2t cubed minus 51 over 2t squared plus 90t. And this is going to be integrated between 6 down to 2.5. And the answer is... Uh, 54 take away 90, oh, so this number's bigger, 96.875. And then when you do the subtraction between those two, you get a final answer of, uh, well, let's, let's work out the distance between them. That would be 42.875. So there we are, and that's, that'll be in metres. Great. So it looks like it's um, it's coming back towards the axis here. So the distance between the two points where they're instantaneously at rest. Um, it looks like what's happening here on the x-axis is it's going out, and it's coming back in, and then it's going back out again. So this point here, that's when it's 2.5 seconds. This point here, that's when it's 6 seconds. So we've found this, is, this distance from here to here between those two points in time as 42.875. Now we haven't seen any questions here where we've gone from acceleration to velocity but that that does happen as well. All right then thanks very much for watching this video make sure you have lots of practice on exercise 11d and uh, make sure you have a go at the last ones in particular because they are a bit more challenging and do require a bit more brain power closer to exam question style though. Right thanks very much for watching. Thank <laughs> you.